Hello, my name is New Wave Blevins. Welcome to Mysteries and Histories. Uh, in this episode here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about shot number one in the JFK assassination. Now, everybody that, you know, follows the JFK assassination and stuff like that and the Warren Commission report and the things we hear that there's only three shots fired that day. And as you see in my videos and in my books and stuff that I've uncovered photographic evidence and other evidence that a uh, piece together to show that it was actually 13 shots fired that day. But the shot number one uh, is more of less the where the so-called magic bullet took place, okay? Where this bullet supposedly came in, JFK's back, exit his throat going out to the left. Now, remember, came in from the right, exiting out to the left, but then this bullet made a 90-degree turn and flipped and then started going through Governor Conley stuff. This is a so-called magic bullet that they want us trying to believe, but as years go by, that stuff, you got to throw away because no one's going to believe that story. Okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you photographic evidence for shot number one. First, we're going to do is we're going to pull this up right here. Okay, this is the map that uh, as soon as it comes up here, here we go. This map here shows us, now this is the time frame from when we see, first seen JFK's limo in the Sapruder film, because the time frames I based on was starting with frame 133 of the Sapruder film when we first see JFK's limo come into play in that film until each one of the shots made contact. Okay, so this is our starting point right here. Okay, as we see in the Sapruder film starting with frame 133, this is our starting point. And from this point, and this point here is where the first shot made contact with JFK which struck him in the back. Okay, from this point to this point, the time frame was 7.16th of a second. Now, starting with from this location to this location when the first shot rang out. Now, the reason why I want to point this out is because of, as you see here, 7.16th of a second. Okay, this gives a, an assassin time to take a proper aim and then take his shot. Okay, which a lot of people say when uh, Oswald took three shots within six seconds, okay? But as you see here, the first shot didn't occur until when he got down to by the Stimmons Freeway sign here, okay? And from this point here, as we see in a Spruder film, okay, to this point here, he has 7.16th of a second to take the aim for this first shot. <clears throat> now, what people don't know is when I pull up the Spruder film, Okay, here is exactly when JFK was first shot in the back. Okay, this is frame 224 of the Spruder film. Then, in frame 225, the bullet is actually exiting JFK's throat. Then, in frame 226, we start seeing Governor Conley, a reaction from Governor Conley, but not the reaction that everybody wants to pull out there. The reaction he is, is he, if you notice, he's got his shoulders like this, but he's turning his head this way a little bit. This what makes him mostly start looking off to his right. He starts moving over this way because something just passed his head. Then, in frame 227 of this Pruder film, we see something strike in, be in between the sun visors here to the chrome uh, of the windshield in JFK's limo. Okay, now when we watch this Pruder film and watch it in motion, in between the sun visors here, it's always black. Okay, it wasn't only one frame that shows frame 227 shows there was something that happened and occurred there. Okay, for it to actually have one solid glow in between the sun visors here because something was being pushed through there. Something actually hit it at that point. So when I found this in this proof film, I start lining up and looking over evidence and everything else as you see right here. Now here is an image of the chrome where that bullet made contact with, okay? Now, when we look at this, okay, we're going to say, oh, well, this bullet could have came from anywhere, you know. This is a bullet that didn't actually came from JFK. This bullet went ahead and, you know, came in this way. We're going to call this another shot and everything else. But actually, this shot here, this bullet didn't here, was made from the bullet that actually exited JFK's throat, okay? Because when we study the angle of this, if the bullet would have came down, okay, which let me zoom in just a little bit, okay, which I'm going to pull up right here. If the bullet, as you see over here, if the bullet came down, 
okay, it wouldn't have made the imprint like this way. It would have been actually dented up around this location here or here. Even when we zoom in, it should have been up in this location here where we should see a dent because the bullet would have came down. Now, if the bullet would have came in straight, okay, this dent shouldn't still be like more or less up here more, not just straight right here, okay? But when we look at this dent, we can see there's an angle coming from inside of the limo, which I'm going to pull up this one right here to show you. Okay, this was taken in a passenger seat of JFK's limo, and they zoomed in and took this picture, okay? As you see here, you see the bent in the chrome right here, okay? And you see where it's actually opened up a little bit right here from, you know, the chrome separating, okay? This angle lines, this dent right in this section right here, actually lines straight back. If you take a straight line, okay, line straight back to JFK's throat, okay? Which this shot would have passed Governor Collins' head and struck that chrome, okay? Now, this is, like I said, when we study dents, and we look at this and we push it and we put all this evidence back in its location where it was. This dent actually lines straight back. When you take the dent from the chrome right up here and you line it straight back where that dent is, that impression of that dent lines straight back to where JFK was sitting and lines up right with his throat. So the first shot struck JFK in the back and exited his throat and struck the chrome of the windshield, as we see in the Sapruder film. Okay, because like I said, when we zoom in, okay, I'm going to show you this right here. I'm going to zoom in right here. Okay, this is frame. I'm going to go to this frame first, okay, if you can see it, which I know I'm down here. But see, right in between here, there's nothing glowing there. It's not white or anything. We see there's a dark space in between the sun visors. Again, in the next frame, we see there is a space and a gap between the sun visors. And this is frame 224. 225 and 226 again we see the gap in between the sun visors as you see here okay now when we go into frame 227 now you see this right here where my cursor is okay it's like one solid piece going straight across because something just struck that chrome right here okay which pushes that up that chrome up when a bullet took a strike there and it made a spark which made this glow right in between here this is why the sun visors look like it's one complete sun visor now and not that space in between as we see here. And then after frame 227, again, we start seeing it between the sun visors this way. We see that gap in between it. We don't see this white glow in between the two sun visors no more. Okay, I want to point that out. <clears throat> now, like I said, the first shot struck JFK in the back which I'm going to zoom in because I know you can't see it here with me. I'm over in this location here. First shot struck JFK in the back. The bullet exit his throat. Okay. And then it struck the chrome between the sun visors right here. Now, again, I want to point out is we, if we look at JFK's throat, we're going to say they're going to sit there and tell us, and, they're, and just like other researchers, they're going to say this is an entry wound. It's not an exit wound. Okay, but they're not looking at these images in reality. Okay, we look at these images in reality. One, we have to keep in mind, as I always point out, you always have to keep in mind. These images were taken way after the fact. This is images here was taken when they moved JFK's body back into Washington, D.C. Okay, now remember, keep in mind, when JFK was at Parkland Hospital, they did a tracheotomy, uh, excuse me, a tracheotomy on JFK, which what they do when they do a tracheotomy, they splice it, they open it up, and they stick a tube down there. And since there was a bullet exit wound here, because actually when you look at this image, okay, which I'm going to show you, right here is the exiting wound. This right here is from them cutting him, because these are slice marks. If you look at it, these are actually slice marks right here from here to here, from them cutting JFK's throat, okay, and placing a tube right down here. But the bullet actually, if you look down here, okay, this is where the bullet actually exit coming out of JFK's throat, okay? 
Now, like I said, keep in mind, this image here that they point out said, no, this is an in, uh, entry wound. No, they did a tracheotomy. And this is all in, in the reports and in documents and everything else. They did a tracheotomy on JFK to stick a tube down there to get air to his lungs. Okay, so when we look at this, we got to think of this while they did a tracheotomy on him. So, you know, we have to look at this, what they did. They cut him right along here, which they did. They cut him across there and stuff. Okay, this, like I said, this is all in the reports and stuff, but they're not going to give you that information. Just like if we look at the tie, okay, <clears throat> which let me pull this up first. As you see here, okay, and it tells us, and even in uh, the Warren Commission report, okay, they said they did a tracheotomy on JFK right here. They enlarged the throat wound and inserted a tube, enlarge the throat wound, and insert a tube. So see, we have to keep this in mind. If they want to point this out, then they need to tell people, researchers need to tell people that they did a tracheotomy on JFK. They enlarged the wound on JFK. They placed a hose down JFK's throat, okay? But they don't tell you this, okay? But I'm going to tell you this because that's the facts. Then we look at JFK's tie, <clears throat> okay? And this is where we can see the bullet holes right here in JFK's tie. And we're going to look right here. Okay. As you see, the bullet hole is actually wider now. That means it's exited. It did not enter. It exited because the bullet hole is wider now. And we see there's still blood on his tie and everything else. Also in a warrant report and in other reports and stuff like that, okay, Right here it says, exit from the front of the neck, causing a nick in the left lower portion, left lower portion of the necktie, of the tie, not in the president's necktie. <clears throat> okay, so right here is where the bullet exited. So the bullet struck JFK in the back. The bullet exit and nicking the left side of JFK's tie, which gives us some clues. Because, see, what people don't understand is this. The bullet entered... As we line the, uh, the shots up, okay, we're going to look at this right here. Let's pull this up real quick. The bullet entered the right side of JFK's back. The bullet was exiting out to the left side. As it was reported, the bullet was exiting out to the left because we see in JFK's shirt and everything else. So we see the bullet entering here and the bullet exiting here. Okay, it was out to the left. As we see in JFK's necktie, nicked the side of the necktie going out to the left, okay? This gives us angles, okay? Now, when we look at this, <clears throat> and we're trying to line these shots up, okay? We look over here, which I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. Bullet entering the back on the right and exiting out to the left. As you see, it's gonna pass Governor Connolly's head. And where's that bullet gonna end up at? Hitting the chrome between the sun visors of JFK's limo. Now, if we take a shot, they, people once claimed it was from, the shot came from the Dow Tex building now, Dow Tex building. Now, if we take a shot from the windows of the Dow Tex building in that angle, that bullet would not have hit JFK. It would hit JFK in the right side of the back, but it exit more of his, on his right side, and it would actually struck Governor Conley. Now, if they said the bullet shot came from Texas uh, school book, uh, instead of the Texas school book deposit, or say it came from Dow Tex building, that would work in their magic bullet theory because the bullet would enter JFK's back, exit his throat, and struck Governor Conley, as you see here. Now, let's say if they took it from the rooftop of the Dow Tex building, where would that bullet end up happening? It would have shot JFK, and this would have been a straight shot. It would have shot JFK in the back of the head, or in his back, but it would be more center of his back, not to the right side, but more center to his back. And again, that bullet would have struck Governor Conley as it exited JFK. See, so see, if you want to work with that magic bullet theory, they should have said the shot came from the Dow Tex building because then the bullet would have probably, it would have struck Governor Conley. But when we line up this shot, okay, that came in, we're going to line like, like I said, we're going to draw a line. Line it straight from the, between the sun visors to JFK's throat. From JFK's throat, 
and a shot through the back. We will trace that shot back, line straight back <clears throat> to the sixth floor of Texas School Book Depository. Now, we're going to show you this. Now, a lot of people says, oh, no, 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 no. Again, we're going to show you the angles. As you see here, which I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, as you see here, we're going to go from the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository. As you see, that shot would came in from the right, as we see in the images, exit JFK store going out to the left, as we see in the images, and would struck the chrome inside of JFK's limo between the sun visors. This shot lines straight back to the sixth floor of Texas School Book Depository. If we take a shot from the window of the uh, Dow Tech building, okay, where's that shot going to end up at? That shot's end up going to shoot JFK in the back, as I said, more a little bit more to the right than JFK's back. Exit JFK's throat struck Governor Conley. Same thing if they went to the rooftop of the Dow Tech building. That shot would have came down, struck JFK in the back right here. Exit more over here, not in the throat now. It would exit more right here, and it would struck Governor Conley. So see, with this first shot, we can eliminate the Dow Tech building completely for this first shot. We can eliminate the Dow Tech building completely for this first shot. Because this first shot, by photographic evidence, and by lining up this shot, takes us right back to the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository. Like I said, when you look at this, and we got to keep in mind, keep in mind, okay, when we look at this shot right here, it's going to come in. Hold on, is that picture? No, 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 no. Oh, right here. Excuse me. Right here it is. When we look at this shot, okay, we're going to start this angle here. Like I said, we look at the shot. See how it's passing Governor Conley's head? But remember, Governor Conley was more over than what people said, claim he's to be. But anyway, if we look at that dent, and we line that dent right back up, where's that straight line going to? goes right back to where JFK was sitting, right where his throat is. That bullet hole lines right back to where JFK's neck is. This is the reason why when, when I do my testing, okay, just like when I do a documentary, I want to get a replica of JFK's limo, and we're going to place these dots. We're going to place dots, not the dents, but we're going to place dots back in these dents where these came from so I can show proper angles and stuff. But as you see here in this shot number one, when we line this shot back up, it actually goes straight back to JFK. This dent lines to where JFK was sitting and lines up to his throat. And as you see here, it's coming in from the right, exiting out to the left, and it's passing Governor Conley's head to strike the chrome between the sun visors of JFK's limo, as you see here. See, it's passing Governor Conley's head here. It's passing Governor Conley's head here as it exiting JFK's throat. Like I said, I base everything on photographic evidence, just like we look at this right here. Okay, any shots from the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository, as you see here, is going to be coming in from the right and exiting out which way? To the left. Okay, any shot coming from here. So shot number one actually came from this window here. Because, like I said, he has 7.16th of a second to take a shot. As I'll pull this one up here so you get a better view and everything else. And we'll talk about the whole complete thing. Okay. This shot here to this location here where first shot made contact with JFK. Okay. This coming in from the right and exiting out to the left. When we look at the view of the window, which you see here, it's coming in from the right and exiting out to the left. Same as we see right here. The bullets coming down, strike JFK in the back, which is right here, exiting his throat, which is right here, and it's gonna pass Governor Conley's head, which Governor Conley's sitting right here, and it's gonna strike that chrome where that chrome was lined up and goes right back to JFK's throat. As we see in the Spruder film, and we line up the other photographic evidence with, with it. That shot from this point here, if you watch my cursor from this point, this point, from starting with frame 133 of the Spruder film, we first start seeing JFK's limo in frame with 7.16th of a second, which actually gave a gunman enough time to take aim. The distance from this shot here to JFK in the back was 194.76 feet or 
64.89 yards for this one shot right here for shot number one. As you see here, okay, I go ahead and when I do my research, okay, I have to line, not only when I was finding this research and I was piecing it all together and everything else, not only that I, I had to look for it, but once I found it and I place all these in one file and then I have to shuffle through everything and see exactly when this took place and when that took place and line up the images and stuff like that. That's how we get more answers. That's how we can find more things. Okay, and then we can actually understand uh, what really took place. Just like this information I'm giving out, just like we go from the starting point here to starting point here. Now we know exactly how much time frame that's in between the starting point of CMS uh, JFK's limo first on Elm Street, as we've seen in Spruder film, to when the first shot made contact to JFK's back. Now we know there's 7.16 of a second from this starting point to this point here. Okay, we know this information out. No one's never knew this information before, but now we do. When I point this out, okay, if any shots come from the Dow Text building, we have to look at it at a different angle. We have to look at when we line them angles up, when we line them straight lines back to from the window or the rooftop or anything else, we're going to find out this information here, which I'm going to pull up, that if it came from the rooftop of the Dow Text building, it would have shot JFK straight in the back, exit somewhere not in his throat area but in his chest area and would have struck Governor Conley in his lower back somewhere as we see here if that shot came from the Dow Tex building but there's no evidence to show that was shot came from the Dow Tex building just like the window of the Dow Tex building if that shot would have came in there that would bullet would enter JFK's back but it would exit more in the center of JFK's throat not the left side of it but the more of the center of JFK's throat but it would have struck Governor Conley either in the back of the head or in his neck or up in his upper back, right in between where his lower neck is. That's where the bullet would have entered at if it came in from that direction there. But when we line this up and we line up the wind, uh, the chrome between the sun visors, we line that shot and that dent up, goes right back to JFK's throat. And then we take it from that point, we place JFK back in the limo. Okay, well, you know that shot came from his throat. Then we know when we line up the back and going out to the left, as we see here, and we take that straight line back, when we place JFK's limo right back in this location here, we're going to see that bullet line straight back. As you see here, we put the location where the first bullet made contact with JFK. We place the limo right back in this location, and we line up this bullet hole that's in the chrome of the windshield back to where it came from, which is JFK's throat. And then we line up JFK's back where the bullet entered JFK's back and exit his throat. And we trace that all the way back and it goes right back to the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository. Okay, so the first shot now with this information that we have here, now we know that the first shot came from the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository. We know the first shot struck JFK in the back, exited his throat, struck the chrome in between the sun visors because this is not based on, you know, here say or nothing. This is based on photographic evidence because as I point out here, when we look at the chrome, we can see that the dent had to come from inside the limo. We take this dent, we line it back up, as you see here, and it lines us straight back to where JFK was sitting and it would line up with his throat by the angle. So that angle where that bullet between that chrome of the sun visors of JFK's limo, that dent, when the impact of that dent lines straight back to JFK's throat, which brings it in coming in out from the left. And then the bullet striking JFK in the back, exiting his throat past Governor Connolly's head, because here's Governor Connolly's seat upright right here, but it'd be sitting down right here. What's it going to do? It's going to pass Governor Connolly's head. As we see in these test images right here and right here, which I'll zoom in, as you see here, What's it doing? It's passing Governor Conley's head. That's the reaction we've seen because he was moving out of the way because the bullet just barely grazed the top of his head or the side of his head, I should say. Now, as you see here, bullet entering JFK's back, exiting his throat out to the left, as we're seeing. And as we're reading reports, the bullet struck JFK in the back, which is on his right side, 
bullet exiting his throat going out to the left because the left side of his necktie was nicked by the bullet exiting. Okay. And the bullet goes past Governor Connolly's head and strikes the chrome between the sun visors right here, as you see right here. Here's that dent in between the sun visors. And then that dent lines straight back to JFK's throat. So you see, when we look at this evidence and we piece this evidence together, okay, now we get more information. We know JFK was shot in the back. We know for a fact the bullet exited JFK's throat. Even though everybody says, no, that's entry wound, no, it was an entry wound. Okay, it was not an entry wound. It was an exit wound. Again, I have to point out they did tracheotomy on JFK. They enlarged the wound in his neck. They placed a tube down his throat. As a point here, I'll point out right here, when we zoom in to JFK's throat, okay, let's zoom in just a little more so you can see. Watch my cursor. Right here is the exit wound, right here. This little section right down here is the exit wound. That's where the bullet exited JFK's throat. This right here to this right here is a cut they put across JFK's throat and they place a tracheotomy tube right here. Okay, this is where they place a tracheotomy tube. This is a cut they made from JFK's throat across here. And right here, as you see at the bottom, right at the bottom right here is where the exit wound was of JFK's throat right here. It was exiting his bottom of his throat right here. They cut it across here and did a tracheotomy on JFK. This is in the reports and everything else. So see, when we see this image of JFK, remember, keep in mind, like I said, this was taken in Washington, D.C. He was shot where? Dallas, Texas. These, were, these images were not taken in Dallas, Texas. They was taken in Washington, D.C. when he brought him, his body back. So we have to keep that in mind that these images, these autopsy images we're seeing was after they brought him back to Washington, D.C. We also have to keep in mind they did a tracheotomy on JFK. Okay, which they'll cut his throat, place a big tube down his throat, and actually have him trying to get breathing, I mean, air to his lungs, okay? We have to keep all this stuff in mind. But when we see this dent, we line this dent up, and it goes right back to where JFK was sitting in his throat, okay? That bullet had to come from inside of JFK. And then we know JFK was shot in the back. So we know that JFK was shot in the back on a more on the right side, bullet exiting out to the left side of JFK, striking the chrome in between the sun visors, which is more on the left side of JFK. Okay, so we're looking at this, and we're going to line it back, line it back, line it back, and it goes to the sixth floor of Texas School Book Depository. So if the first bullet and the first shot came from the uh, sixth floor of Texas School Book Depository, struck JFK in the back, exit a stroke going out to the left, past Governor Connolly's head, and striking a chrome between the sun visors of JFK's limo. And we also can see that in the Pruder film as well. So at this point here for the first shot, first shot, shot number one, starting with frame one, uh, 133 of the Sapruder film when JFK's limo was first seen there from the starting point to the first time it made contact his bullet was 7.16 of a second. This shot came from the sixth floor of Tech School Book Depository. The distance is 194.76 feet or 64.89 feet. The uh, first shot struck JFK in the back. The bullet exited his throat, going out to the left, and struck the chrome in between the sun visors in JFK's limo. By the photographic evidence, and by lining this evidence up, and by looking at it from different views and keeping self outside the box, now we know the true story of this first shot. Now we know exactly when this shot took place, time frame, where the shot made contact with and everything else, like I said, and I point out. First shot <clears throat> struck JFK in the back on frame 224 of the Sapruder film. The bullet exited JFK's throat in frame 225 of the Sapruder film. And frame 226, the bullet was passing Governor Conley's head. That's when we start seeing a reaction from Governor Conley going like this. He's jerking over to his right because the bullet's passing his head. Then in frame Excuse me, then in frame 227 of this Pruder film, the bullet strikes the chrome in between the sun visors. Don't forget to tell your friends about us. Don't forget the like button. Don't forget the subscribe button. Don't forget to share this video in the comments down below. 
I'm going to leave a couple of sites. You can either make a donation to the GoFundMe account or you can order my book, Evidence of Conspiracy. It's going to be in the description down below. After this one is done, tomorrow I'm going to work on shot number two. Then we're going to keep on going until we hit shot number 13. I'm going to show photographic evidence. I'm going to show angles of where these shots came from. And I'm going to go more in details, as you see here, as showing you and explaining more to you that no other researcher is going to give this information. No one's going to actually put this much time and effort into a research on each individual shot. I want to thank you again. Hit the like. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe button. Don't forget to tell your friends about us and share this with your family and friends. Thank you and have a pleasant day.